We know it's not a ruptured Achilles. That would have gotten out. But I got to tell I'm going to make a little prediction here, and I hope that I am really wrong. Uh, number one, <clears throat> and then maybe what the Lakers could do about this. Yeah. I would not be surprised, Tiki, if that MRI spits back something a little less favorable from what the average fan or Lakers are thinking right now. The way he was, first of all, the motion when he pushed off, mm-hmm. that's how it almost always happens. That how it happened. That's how it happened to Durant. That's how it happened to Soraka with a Braves pitcher when he was bouncing off the mound trying to cover first base. That's how it. David um, uh, Ryan Howard yep. trying to lead the batter's box back in the day in the world in the World Series. Like you see stuff like that, and and I'm not saying we're there. I'm not, we're. I think we're certainly a step away from that. But I think that this thing could be a real issue for the Lakers. I agree, BT. Because the problem is, very rarely do you hear. Oh, he has a strain of his Achilles, and everything's fine from then on out. Mm-hmm. It never. I, I. I'm trying to think of an example when that happened, and it just. It's just very, very rare. Like sometimes if they talk about the heel, like mm-hmm. you have the heel, so it's like the it's the muscular, it's a tendinal junction as opposed to the tendon itself. Good Make, point. That that gets because that can get inflamed. That's you sometimes a shoe r- r- uh, rubs on that a little bit and it gets inflamed and it hurts a lot. You can you can tamp that down with ice and treatment and rest and things of that nature. But when it's the tendon itself they're talking about, mm-hmm. I can't think of an example where it didn't eventually tear. Um, and KD is the most recent one that we can that we remember when he tried to play through it and then ultimately it went. And we all know how that how that worked out for. Uh, for that Warriors team, is they, um, you know, they, they they couldn't finish out the finals, and and KD obviously went somewhere else afterwards. So yeah, it, you need to be worried if you're the Lakers right now because this doesn't have good future written on it. And I would also ask the question, and I'll ask you right now on a national show: Why the hell are Lakers letting them play? It, it, yeah. It's at that point, it's one thing. Tendonitis is bad enough. Tendinosis is is worse than tendonitis based on the grading. Um, you, you could make the case here that the Lakers were a little reckless letting Anthony Davis go out there and play. Yeah, I mean, because you think about what he, where where he came from. Where BT, BT they like, they played in the finals, and that was three. Well, now it was it was now it's three months ago, but four months ago they were in the finals, man. And no rest, you get right back into the season, and you know these these bodies, these especially big bodies, these seven footers. That's a lot of wear and tear without having any downtime, and so. Um, I agree. As soon as that thing flared up, they should have put him on the shelf. And I know they want to repeat. And I know they want to, you know, establish continuity with this new team because there are a lot of new faces on this team. Yep. Um, it, 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 it's, it's not going to be worth it because now they got to find somebody and the off chance that this becomes a season-long issue. That's where I was going. So now the Lakers need to have a – a legitimate plan B, and I don't mean like an, an ancillary piece that you bring in to complement LeBron and Anthony Davis. Now mm-hmm. they've got to be ultra creative and ultra aggressive because it's one thing to deal with Anthony Davis, but tightly connected to that is you know the very short window that LeBron James has to win championships. Yep. So you've got to try to maximize that. So here's what I'm doing. Uh, I, I don't love him as a player, but I think he would be great with LeBron. I'm calling the Pistons about Blake Griffin, yep. who's going to be held out of games. They're going to deal him. I'm calling the Cavs about Andre Drummond, mm-hmm. who's going to be held out of games, not playing again until they deal him. The Lakers have to be in on every phone call and every serious conversation about not only those guys, and then you could get further down the list, like Zach Levine with the Bulls and yeah. obviously Bradley Beal with the Wizards, but I don't think the Lakers have enough assets to get those guys, so that's why I'm kind of going for that B-minus mm-hmm. area. They've got to do something. Now, if you get lucky and Davis is back in two weeks and he's fine, now you're just even more powerful whenever you face the Jazz or the Clippers or the Warriors or, not the, or, or the Nuggets or, or the Nets or the Sixers, whomever. But they got to do something. Yeah, I they have to do something. And, and, and we know that those those guys are going to become available. The only challenge now is because there's been a conscious effort. It feels like either on LeBron's part or Frank Vogel and the Lakers organization's part to ease the minutes of LeBron this year. Um, you not know, this month, though. Not this month, obviously, but this year. But yeah. so we know what their plan was. It's obviously the best laid plans, right? <laughs> People laugh. You, you, ultimately, they go, they go awry. And right now, it's gone awry because without AD in the lineup, LeBron is carrying the load mm-hmm. um, significantly, and you worry about what effect that's going to have on him. Now, I'm not worried about LeBron. For, I don't know what it is. He just 
other than the one year, two years ago, he just he's he's an Iron Man. He just never gets hurt, and he's always available. And that's what makes him such a great player. Is that yes, he's great, but he's also available all the time. Mm-hmm. A lot of great players that just they're they're hurt often. Like Davis, uh, Anthony Davis is is the prime he's example. Hurt. And so as na- now with the new a different structure, if Anthony Davis is compromised here, you know how much more of that scoring burden is going to be on LeBron James. Whereas last year, he could share it. I mean, there was many games that AD scored 35 as LeBron. Mm-hmm. And that, that that's not going to be the case anymore. If they need a high score, 35, 40-point game, it's got to come from LeBron James because nobody else on that roster can do it. That's correct. And so, and so yeah, you're going to bring in the Andre Jumans or the Blake Griffins or whoever, whoever it is they end up acquiring. Yeah. Th- that's not going to match the scoring that they're going to miss from AD. And so that that's the real challenge. Now, maybe you'll get some defensive help. So maybe your defensive rating goes up a little bit with Drummond. They're already you know, pretty you know, decent defensive team True, but you know wise. what I mean? It goes yeah, yeah, up yeah. a little bit more with yeah. Andre Drummond. So it kind of offsets. But scoring is, is at a premium, man. You can't, yep. you can't sacrifice that in any way. No. And if LeBron, you're right. If LeBron's got to now substitute and be the leading scorer every night, um, can he do it? Yeah. But it will now – it will now – It'll have, a, it'll have an impact on his ability to make the other guys better. Yes. Because now he's changing roles, and his best role is the role he's in now. That's right. Selective score, selective assassin, facilitator. That's right. And without AD, you can't be so selective if you want to win games. So no, you're right. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a little problematic here. Hopefully it's not much, but uh, that, that walk, that ginger limp, really, to the locker room, he looked, he looked scared. Yes. Like the way he, you, you know, you played, yep. the way he kept reaching down and touching it. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he did not look like a player who felt like he was coming out in the, you know, to, to play in a week or so. We'll see. We'll certainly see. But uh, they got to be on the phone. They're a great franchise. They mm-hmm. will be. There you go. Of